for indications where immobilization of the lower leg is required. For example, fractures of the ankle joint. Define the position of the limb before the start of application. This will give the patient an indication of which position he has to maintain. Choose the appropriate width of stockinette. Measure the length from knee to toes. Add double the foot length and cut. Roll up the stockinette before applying onto the limb to overcome sliding pressure during application. Roll off over the leg and remove all wrinkles and creases. Apply padding to the limb by wrapping it from the metatarsals, around the ankle and up the lower leg, using a second roll of padding if needed. Use extra padding for any bony prominences. It's recommended to wear protective gloves before applying Plaster of Paris. Select the appropriate width of the Plaster of Paris bandage. Fold the bandage into six layers at the length needed to fit the patient. Pick up the bandage in a zigzag shape. Activate the splint by dipping into cool water, holding the ends and maintaining the splint fold. Remove from water and gently squeeze to drain. Straighten out the splint and run it over the edge of the bucket to smooth and dispose of surplus water. Apply onto the patient's lower leg by folding some of the splint over the toes, placing it along the sole of the foot and the calf. Smooth and mold the splint down. Apply a second activated splint from the lateral side around the sole of the foot to the medial side. Smooth down. Secure the splint into place with bandages, leaving the toe area free. Hold the splint in place for a while. Cut away the surplus splint from around the toes. Pull out the stockinette at the distal end and fold over. Trim any excess. Fold down the stockinette at the proximal end. Smooth edges provide skin protection and comfort. Using a bandage, wrap around the ankle, first going distally and around the metatarsals, then proximally. Proceed up the lower leg, overlapping by 50% and fix. Use a second bandage if needed. Check for desired range of motion and any points that may cause irritation or pressure. 
After approximately three to five minutes, the splint is set and the patient can be released. After 24 hours, the splint is fully set.